Hello everyone and welcome to Leveraging AI Technology for Enhanced Communication Skill Development in Audiology Education. My name is Prasha Sufal and I will be presenting part of this project along with my team member Pingo. Charles Darwin University acknowledges all the First Nations people across the lands on which we live and work. We pay our respects to elders both past and present. We are presenting from Larrakia land today. We know that effective communication skills, such as interview and patient feedback, are critical for students to provide quality patient care. However, practicing these skills with real patients can be challenging. This project came about when we looked at contemporary and innovative methods to solve some of the challenges in audiology education, including students having limited practice time in clinics, the cost and training associated with simulated actors, and access to paid simulated learning platforms. To solve some of these challenges, we looked at a way to support students with their professional skills um, development using AI technology, as well as self-assessment and peer feedback. The integration of AI into student learning has the potential to reduce the time and costs associated with training actors and can also provide students with unlimited practice opportunities to hone their skills. The study used a design-based approach in a three-stage process. Stage one was developing and testing the AI virtual patient using freeware and open source architecture. Stage two was implementing and evaluating the chatbot using a modified version of the Aspias. And stage three, we introduced the chatbot to students using an LMS tool known as Feedback Fruit to conduct the self and peer assessments. We selected Character AI in the beta version due to its natural language processing model. It's a neural language model that can produce humanistic responses and engage in contextual conversation. Users can create a character, in this case, a patient who is coming to see an audiologist, and we call the virtual patient Pat. Pat was defined with the following clinical characteristics and personality features. She was a female, middle-aged Australian English speaker, and she was designed to be responsive to questions and easygoing and non-aggressive. In terms of her clinical presentation, she mostly presented with left-sided symptoms, including left-sided hearing loss, tinnitus, and vertigo. I will now hand over to Pingo, who will discuss the next stage in the study as well as the results. At this stage, it was to make sure the conversation flow mimicked a typical clinical patient interaction, asking the patients about the symptoms, medical history, and lifestyle to help diagnose the condition. Pat was trained on a large data set of audiology related text to simulate a realistic conversation with a patient. We used more than 200 conversations as our training data set. Overall performance of the chatbot simulated a good quality of human-like conversation with good response times, able to detect and respond to intent and contextual information. Pat was able to recall previous information in the conversation and respond with the same clinical features every time. This provided a significant amount of conversational data over a period of five months before the chatbot was trialed with students. In training the chatbot, we used ASPIA's framework attributes as a guiding criteria to evaluate the chatbot's responses, ensuring alignment with the established standards of clinical interviewing, specifically user input encompassed various scenarios and prompts designed to elicit specific behaviors and responses from the chatbot across the identified ASPIA's domain. We systematically evaluated the chatbot's responses against the ASPIA's framework with the aim to enhance its ability to simulate realistic clinical interactions and effectively train audiology students in essential communication skills. Further, we used ASPIA's as a learning rubric by explicitly mapping the communication competencies and the audiology professional need to develop when interacting with their patients. This way, we enable participants to meaningfully self-assess against uh, 
the framework, identify a skill gap, reflect on their skills, and purposefully find ways to upskill targeted areas to enhance their communication skills and patient interaction. The AI patient part was trialed with the first year masters of audiology students in a second semester unit. The pilot case study consisted of five female and two male participants, four with English as a first language and three English as a second language. The participants rated themselves and their peers using a seven-point scale and provided either compliment or a suggestion in briefing each other in the following areas of ASPIA's framework, professionalism, communication, interview skills, and content. The findings indicate the chatbot provided a safe and authentic environment and limited practice opportunities for the students and opportunity to practice questioning in interviews. And finally, to practice empathy, build trust, and rapport with the patient. Further, the peer review of each other interaction provided an opportunity for participants to reflect on their skill development in establishing and building relationship with the patients, professional competency, interviewing others professionally, using appropriate language, and integration of professional knowledge. Further, the findings reveal peer and self-evaluation also enable spot, spotting gaps in communication skills and identifying further areas of improvement. In conclusion, this study demonstrates the benefits of using AI chatbot technology in learning context, particularly helping to build theoretical knowledge in practical applications in developing students' clinical reasoning and development of communication skills in non-clinical settings. Therefore, it is evident such approach can equip students with the necessary skills and confidence to excel in a real-world audiological practice. If you want to have a conversation with Pat, you can use the link in the slide and you will need to create an account, uh, a free account to get chatting with Pat. Thank you for watching our presentation and see you in the question and answer session. Thank you.